Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing the second part tutorial of how to draw skin with colour pencil. So today I'm using Hermione and I'm going to be showing you in detail how I draw her forehead and her nose with the Caran d'Ache Luminance colour pencils. So for the first part, I did six different skin tones and I went through more in detail how you could achieve warm skin tones and cool skin tones. So if you haven't seen that already, I highly recommend you checking that out before you watch this video. So for today's video I'm going to be using the same colour pencils that I did for the first part so all the colours that I'm going to be using you can see me talk about in the first part or I'm going to be linking all the colours that I'm using in the description below and when I'm going through when I'm drawing the skin I will be saying which colour pencil I'm using at each time in the video. So as I've said I'm going to be doing this using Caran d'Ache Luminance coloured pencils and I'm going to be doing it on the Strathmore Bristol Vellum 400 series paper. I like this paper because it has a really nice amount of tooth to it and I can get some good layers on before it becomes flat and you can't apply any more layers. Anyway let's get on with the tutorial. So the first colour pencil that I'm using is the Raw Umber 50%. So what the percentages mean is the 10% is the lightest and then there's 50% and then there's just the Raw Umber or sometimes there's more percentages if there's more gradations. But what I'm doing is I'm using the side of the pencil. As you can see I'm not applying it vertically, I'm just using the side and I'm lightly shading it. I'm not using a lot of pressure at all and I'm using this to block in where the shadows are. So I had a reference photo of her when I was drawing this and it's really important that you look at your reference photos quite a lot when you're doing the drawing. So identify where the shadows are and where the highlighted parts are. And also try and identify whether it's a warm skin tone or a cooler skin tone. So with Hermione, she had a warmer skin tone on where the shadow parts are, like as if a warm light was cast in that direction. And it tended to be where the highlighted parts were, it was a bit more of a cooler skin tone, so a bit more pinkish. So once I blocked in the shadows with that raw umber, I moved on to using the Burnt Ochre 10% which is the lightest version of this and I'm just applying this all over where the forehead is. So I'm using the side of the pencil again and I'm doing it really lightly and I'm going in one kind of direction and it's really important that you don't apply any pressure because when you're blending this out you don't want to have harsh lines that show through, so directional lines. So when I'm using really light pressure, when I blend it out you won't see any of the line movements, it will all blend in together really nicely. So the next colour I'm applying is the Burnt Sienna 10% and this is more of a pinkish sort of tone. And as I said it tended to be where her skin was more highlighted, it was a bit more pinkish and towards the top left hand corner. So I'm applying this really lightly and I'm just layering the colours using the side of the pencil and I'm just using the side to kind of glaze those colours over so I'm not pushing into the paper at all, it's kind of doing the work for me. And then I use the darker raw umber, so this is just the raw umber and I'm using this for some of the harsher shadows and I'm really just building up the layers before I do the blending out for the first time. Next I am using the Anfraquinoid Pink and I'm using this where there was more of a glow on her skin, where it's more of like a pinkish glow and this adds a lot of life to the skin and makes it look really healthy. Then I'm just layering those same colours, so that burnt sienna again, just to get enough coverage so that when we blend it out it isn't grainy. And when I'm darkening those shadows I'm always using a gradation of that raw umber. And then I'm also adding a bit of the burnt sienna for those shadow parts in combination with that raw umber. So now I'm using the Burnt Ochre 50% and I'm using this on the shadow parts that have a bit more of a warmer skin tone and also around where the hairline is that was a bit of a warmer tone as well. And now I'm going in with the Burnt Ochre 10% and I'm using this to blend it all out. So when I'm blending the layers I'm using a lot more pressure and I'm using it to kind of push the colours together and blend them all out. So I'm using the Burnt Ochre 10% on the shadow parts to blend that out and then I'm using the white colour pencil on the highlighted regions to blend that out. So when I'm blending I'm using really small circular motions and I'm using the pencil a bit more vertically now so that I can get a bit of pressure in there. And this will flatten out the tooth a bit but it will leave enough layers so that I can glaze colours on top of it to darken up the shadows and add a bit more of a warm glow to it if I need to. So I can still add more layers on top of this. 
So I'm using really small circular motions and I'm really trying to get in so there's no little white dots around. So really trying to make sure it's all blended together. And as you can see, you can't see the lines now of where you were shading the colours on. It's really blended nicely together and you can see different tones of where the shadows are. So adding all those individual colours really adds depth to the drawing and makes it look a lot more realistic because skin tones isn't just made from a few different colours. There's lots of different hues to it and a lot of different tones. Okay, so now you can see that I left the highlighted region without being blended out and I'm going in with the white Caran d'Ache Luminance colour pencil to blend this out and I'm using the same type of motion and pressure as I did with the Burnt Ochre 10% but this was a slightly cooler skin tone so I didn't want to use the Burnt Ochre 10% because it would have been too dark as well because it was very highlighted and there's a lot of shine cast on this side of her face. So I'm blending this up towards where I ended off with the Burnt Ochre 10% and then I'll use the Burnt Ochre 10% and the White Colour Pencil together to ease them into each other so you can't see where I blended with the 10% Ochre and where I blended with the White Colour Pencil. It will look more of a nice blended transition rather than a harsh line. As you can see it now looks a lot more seamless. So once the first layer is fully blended out, now is the time to go and glaze the colours over to darken up where the shadows are and to add some more warmer tones or different hues if you need to. So the first thing I'm using is the Burnt Ochre 50% and I'm using this to add more of a warm glow to the shadowed part, so on the left side of her face. And then I'm going in with the Raw Umbers and I'm using those to add a bit more shadows, especially around the eyebrows because it's really important that you make the eyebrows look like they're easing into the skin rather than just stuck onto the skin. So I'm using the side of the pencil when I'm glazing so this doesn't disturb the smooth look that you've got. If you were to apply the pencil vertically then it would ruin all the smoothness that you've got and it wouldn't look as good and flawless. So it's really important that you use a really light, no pressure at all, so really light hand and just glaze them over and it should go on itself just by touching it onto the paper and you shouldn't have to do a lot of work when you're doing this process. So at this point I'm really looking at the reference photo and looking at where the shadows need to be a bit darker and where I need to add more pinkish tones or orangey warmer tones to make sure it looks as realistic as possible. So now that I've finished the forehead you can see it looks really smooth and it looks nice and three dimensional. Now I'm going to move on to the nose. So the nose is a lot more tricky because there's a lot more different structures to it and it needs to look really three dimensional. So at this point you really need to look closely at your reference photo to make sure you're getting those shadows and highlights in the correct place. So the first thing that I'm doing again is I'm using the raw embers and I'm using these to block in where the shadows are. So I'm using the raw umber 50% and for the darkest parts I'm using just the raw umber. And then I'm using the burnt sienna and I'm using this because at the tip of the nose it was more of a cooler skin tone. So when there's cooler skin tones I tend to use the burnt siennas much more than the burnt ochres. And now I'm applying that burnt ochre 10% all over the nose like I did with the forehead and now I'm just going to go over and layer lots of individual colours to make sure I'm building up that tone before I blend it out. So I'm applying the burnt ochre 50% to create a warmer skin tone and I'm applying more of the raw umbers and burnt siennas. And this will be very individual to the type of person that you're drawing and their skin tone. So they might have a cooler skin tone or warmer and darker skin tone. So it's really important that you look at your reference photo and try and pick out the colours that you think you'll need. And then for the tip of the nose I'm adding more of the burnt sienna, so the darkest part. And for the nostril I'm using that burnt sienna and also the castle earth, so this is a browner colour. 
and I'm using them and glazing the burnt sienna over the top to create more of a warm hue to it because it didn't look solid black. So now I'm applying a bit more pressure with the raw umber 50% and applying more of that burnt sienna 10% around the nostril. So I'm just laying up with the burnt ochres as you can see and very shortly I'm going to go and blend out this first layer. Okay, so now that I've added all the layers, I'm going in with the Burnt Oak 10% and I'm using this to blend out the whole of the nose, except I'm leaving some of the highlighted regions free so that I can use the white colour pencil to blend that out. But I will apply a bit of this Burnt Oak 10% onto the highlighted parts, but I won't apply any pressure because I'll do that with the white colour pencil. So now I'm going in with the white colour pencil and I'm using that on the highlighted parts just to make it look a lot lighter than the surrounding areas. I am also using that white colour pencil on parts of the nose where there was a lot more shine to it so on the tip of the nose around the nostrils where it was more highlighted because this adds a lot of dimension to it and makes it look really three dimensional. Now the tip of the nose isn't as dark as it needs to be so I'm going in and I'm glazing a lot more colours over the top and again I'm using the side of the pencil with very very little pressure if none at all. So I'm going in with the Amphraquinoid Pink to add a nice little half a glow to the tip of the nose and I'm going in with the Burnt Ochres and the Raw Umbers and Burnt Siennas. Anyway guys, that's mostly it for this tutorial. I really hope you found it useful. Remember to go and check out part 1 to see how you can create different skin tones and how you can use the coloured pencils in different combinations to get different looks. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to my channel, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss out on my future tutorials and time lapse videos. Also, I'll leave all the links to my social media in the description below so you can follow me on all the social media sites. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.